Today I'll be modding a Nintendo Switch using a PicoFly mod chip. Specifically this is a blue Nintendo Switch Lite model. I bought this console brand new today for the purpose of this video, so I'm hoping today to demonstrate how to install the PicoFly mod chip. In particular, this is a 3-in-1 piece mod chip, meaning it works on both the cores, the OLEDs, and the lights. So we're only going to need about two of the flex cables that come in the package. I'll show you the mod chip in a little bit, but first, let's get the console disassembled. We'll begin by removing the four screws on the back of the console. These are all tri-wing screws. And then if we move to the top of the console, there are two Phillips heads and the same on the bottom of the console next to the USB-C charging port. Once the screws are removed, we can then pop off the back cover to expose the internals of the console. And the next thing we need to remove is this metal shield. It's held in by Philips silver screws, so you can go ahead and remove all of those. I would never rely on videos like mine completely to show you how to disassemble things, so I'm going to leave an iFixit written guide in the description below, which will show you in a little bit more detail how to take this console apart. Once the metal shield is removed, we need to remove the heatsink which is held in by three Phillips silver screws. Then we need to unplug the battery before we can begin working on the console. But first we need to remove this ribbon cable to show us the connector for the battery. Next we need to remove this metal shield to expose the APU that we need to solder onto. So go ahead and get yourself a plastic pick and pry up on this metal plate until it pops off. As the capacitors we need to solder to are completely covered in thermal paste, we're going to need to clean them up with a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol. Make sure this is very clean as we don't want any flux or solder mixing in with thermal paste while we're doing the job. Next let's take a look at the mod chip itself. It comes in this little anti-static bag, and this is the main mod chip itself. This is the other flex cable we'll need, and this is the flex cable we'll need for the APU. The APU flex cable needs to be prepared before it's put in the console, so what we need to do is pre-tin these pads. We're going to add some flux to them to make sure the solder flows nicely onto both SP1 and SP2. Then we'll pre-tin the pads by adding some leaded solder to all four of the pads. Once the flex cable is prepared, you'll want to bring it over to the console and hook it under this metal piece exactly as I'm showing here. It will perfectly line up with two capacitors that are horizontal. Then we can begin to anchor down the flex cable using the two anchor points at the bottom. These also serve as a ground point. It makes soldering the capacitor so much easier if the flex cable is flush to the board, so what I like to do is melt the solder on these anchor points whilst pushing down with some tweezers and then I will only remove my tweezers from applying pressure once the two anchor points are properly soldered down. This ensures that it's flush to the board and just makes the job a whole lot easier. Next we're going to move on to the capacitors themselves. 
we're going to add some flux to both SP1 and SP2. And then what we're going to do is connect the pads to each side of these horizontal capacitors. This is definitely the most challenging part of this install and I really recommend you take your time with this. I've done multiple switch installs and this still can get a little bit tricky. The thing you've got to be most careful about is not ripping these off the board. If you remove these capacitors from the board, then we're not going to be able to glitch this console. What I recommend doing is adding some solder to the end of your iron, just a little bit, and then slowly tapping these points. You don't want to leave your iron on these points for too long, as we don't want to heat the capacitor up too much. If we do this, we risk flowing it off of the board. Once both sides are connected, we want to clean it with some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. We don't want any flux residue on the APU as not only does it look messy, but it might get in the way of any thermal paste. Next we're going to move on to the second flex cable, which is the light FPC. Today's video is sponsored by JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the cheapest and best way to get your PCBs printed professionally. They offer lots of customization on PCBs including the colour of the silkscreen, thickness of the boards and lots of other things that you need to make your PCB perfect. They offer a top notch quality service at low affordable prices. They also offer 3D printing and CNC machining making them the perfect solution for all of your project's needs. Go to the link in the description below to get your PCBs professionally printed today. Big thanks to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video, now let's get back to it. This is definitely one of the better versions of this flex cable as it has holes in the actual flex PCB, so all you have to do is flow solder down through it onto the main board. We're going to need to remove the auxiliary and game card slots. That's because the ribbon cable actually covers this area that we're going to need. As you can see here, under the game card ribbon cable, it will line up to get the 3 volt power. The first point we're going to solder is the ground point on the bottom of the flex PCB. And this is because it's a really good way to make sure that our flex cable is lined up correctly with the rest of the points. So what I like to do is add some flux and solder to this ground point, melt it, and then move the PCB around with my tweezers to make sure that it's properly aligned. Once that's done, we can then solder the 3 volt three point. This is just personal preference, but this is the one that I like to begin with. This point here is an anchor point, and there is another one that we're going to do later. So simply solder this one down, whilst holding the PCB down with some tweezers to make sure that it's completely flush to the board. Then we can add some solder to the 3 volt 3 pad to make sure that this point is getting power. Next we're going to solder the B connection which simply flows down onto the pad. Once again add some flux, make sure that the board is aligned and solder in this point. And of course holding it down with some tweezers to make sure that it's flush to the board. Now the C, A and D points. These points used to be really difficult but thanks to this flex cable we can literally just add some solder to the point and it flows through to the bottom of the board. This is definitely the best flex cable I've ever used on a Nintendo Switch Lite and I really recommend getting one of these. It makes the install so much easier. These points were such a pain before and could honestly take half an hour probably if you did them with bare wire, especially if you're a beginner. Whether you're new or a beginner, this is definitely worth the investment. Now that we have all the points, we can go ahead and clean up that ground point a little bit and head over to the other side to solder down the other anchor point. I also redid my 3 volt 3 line as I wasn't really that confident in the soldering job. 
Simply just tapping your iron on the point should reflow it nicely. And of course, once we're done with the soldering, it's important to clean up all the flux with a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol. And there we go, that is all the soldering done for the Switch mod chip. Now we simply need to connect the mod chip together. The first thing we need to do is change this metal shield here and just flatten it a little bit. This is so that when we put it back on over the APU, the, it's not crushing that CPU flex. Simply get the mod chip and connect the two ribbon cables, one being at the top and one being on the bottom right. Be careful not to bend these too much, as you could cause some damage, or if you pull on them too hard, you could potentially rip up some of the solder joints we made earlier. Once those are connected, we can reconnect the battery connector and the screen ribbon cable. The console is now fully ready to test. So what we want to do is just simply click the power button and then we're not going to touch the console at this point. All of the LEDs are going to be flashing on the mod chip and this is the training session so we get nice fast boots later on. Once the LED is turned off, flip the console over and you should see the no SD screen and this indicates that the console is ready to launch custom firmware and that we have done the mod chip installation properly. Now that we've confirmed that the console is fully functional and booting into our firmware, we now need to disconnect the battery and fully reassemble the console. We first want to reattach the game cart and auxiliary ports. We then need to attach the four screws on the auxiliary port and the rest on the game cart slot. Then we can reattach the heatsink, make sure to push it in properly at the top, there is a little bit of adhesive up there to hold it in, and then we need to reinsert the three Phillips screws to make sure that the thermal paste is making a good connection. If you'd like to, this is a good time to clean the heatsinks and replace it with some brand new thermal paste. We need to modify the metal shield to make sure that it's not touching the mod chip, otherwise it's going to get crushed. So what you want to do is measure where the mod chip is and make a cutout. This is definitely not some of my best work. I made a clear mistake by cutting too much. I'm sure you can do a better job. Then we can add some tape to hold in the mod chips to make sure it doesn't rattle around and then put on the back plate again. Then we need to put back in all of the screws. Two Phillips ones going on the top and then two Phillips on the bottom and then the four long tri-wing screws on the back of the console. And there we go, we now have a fully modified Nintendo Switch Lite that is ready to boot our custom firmware. And there it is, we now have a fully modified Nintendo Switch Lite. Here's the Switch Lite that I modded all boxed up. Um, what I am going to do soon is show you more videos that contain software setup. I think I've, I've done every console, right? So I've done the V1 switches, the V2s, the OLED, the lights. But something a lot of people are asking for is, well, I've modded my console, what do I do now? Now, I am going to leave some guides in the description below that show you how to do this until I make some videos on it. Obviously, I won't be able to show you guys how to install games and things like that, but in terms of getting your custom firmware up and running, I can cover that with no problems. So that is something that's going to be coming soon. If you managed to successfully mod your Switch with this video, definitely leave me a comment down below. I love seeing comments of people who've followed the videos and like modded their own switches. I think it's, it's really cool to see people learning something from the videos. If you have any video suggestions, also leave those down below. I do now have a Patreon, so for about a dollar a month, you can donate to the channel. It just helps me make videos like this and you'll also get some behind the scenes contents 
the ability to vote on content upcoming if you care about that for some reason. I also have a Discord so you can come and chat with me and others about modding things and just general nerd talk. Big thanks as always to JLCPCB for sponsoring this video. If you have modded your Switch with this guide then I hope you enjoy it. Let me know of course how it goes and I'll see you in the next video.